I just need you to listen to the problem right now and figure thing and and just like be there with me and kind of like help, let me vent and then we'll get to a fixing stage later. If there's a problem, like you just fix it. Like, I don't even know why we're talking about this. Like, let's just fix it. Like, what's what's the point of the emotions? What's the point of this? Like, if this is an issue, like here's things we can do to fix the problem. Why are we wasting time like doing this? And I think that other catalyst for us to be able to step back and see this too is just what do we want our kids to see as their manual moving forward in their relationship? Mm -hmm. I'm still Justin Walker. She's still Amanda Martin. Like that's how I look at her sometimes. Like that's who she is. She's like the strong hot girl in uh, seventh grade. Everyone, they, now she's all mine. Give me blood. Um, but like, that's who she is. And that's who I want her to be. Because to, to tell you the truth, 100%, like if she became a really passive um, woman, like it, it, that's just not who I wanted her to be. That's not who she was designed to be. And she would have to be like shrinking herself to fit my idea of what she should be. And that shouldn't be the case. What's up guys? So today on Man Minutes, I'm bringing on my awesome wife, um, first guest as we're starting to back up, most important guest. Um, her name is Amanda Walker. Uh, we've known each other since we were 13 years old and we're gonna talk about marriage. We're gonna get into some stuff and just kind of talk about things that we think have made us successful in marriage, things that we think can help you um, and some failures that we've had along the way. But I will let her introduce herself uh, just cause she's gonna say it way more eloquently than I will. Uh, my name is Amanda Walker. And as Jay said, we've known each other for a heck of a lot of time. Um, but most importantly, now I think that um, beyond what I do is who we are as a couple. And we have kids 14 and 12. So uh, mom and dad are the roles that are most important to me. But outside of that, um, I run a business. I run a coaching business where I coach coaches and teach them how to grow a profitable coaching businesses and build out their frameworks called The Best Damn Coach. And I'm just pumped to be here with you today. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. It's a long trip from the house yeah. to uh, mm -hmm. the shop out here where we're recording. So, so we're going to just get into it. Um, we're going to talk about kind of three main components. Um, first up, just being honest and real with each other. Um, supporting each other, like supporting each other's goals and then listening um, and how to listen, listening versus fixing. I talked about a little bit on the last episode, but I think that's a super important thing. So let's just start, start off with um, being honest and real. I think that's one of the things that we are very good at with each other. I think that we are um, able to just truly be honest and and help each other move forward um, and and go from there. And I think it's it hasn't always been that way. Well, I think the reality is when you meet when you're 13, you're an entirely different person when you are 13, 23, 33, and now almost 42 and change. <laughs> um, and I think that you grow into yourself. And so I think we've learned that by not being honest in some aspects kind of bites you in the butt in the long run. And and it's and it's not big mistruths, it's tiny things too. And I think a lot of that has come from when you know someone for so long or you're in a relationship with someone, like you don't want to hurt their feelings. It's hard sometimes to step in and declare your needs and say what your needs are. But I think we've learned that transparency up front saves so much energy and work and hardship in the back end. Yeah, for sure. I think you said it like the little things, right? Like it's like little things as far as like when you're when your spouse asks like what you really want, like just being upfront about it, like, what do you want? Like, is this okay? Is it not okay? Like just being true and honest about those feelings and not having to hide them or change them because then, I don't know if you guys can ever relate to this, but sometimes I would ask my wife a question and I would get an answer. And then later on, the answer that was given would come up that it did bother her. Never, never. But I mean, that is the point. I think that happens in a lot of marriages, though, where um, one of the people is afraid to just say what they need because 
I don't know, judgment or uh, because they're afraid to hurt feelings or they don't want to step on toes or they're trying to honestly, a lot of the times for us, I think it's, we're just trying to like honor the other person too. And I am classic. I will totally admit this. I am classic for, or was in the past, I've worked on this a lot, totally classic for holding it in and like just trying to be uh, like, like keep it on the DL that it was bothering me. And then three weeks, four weeks later, I'd be like, but do you remember four weeks ago this happened? Um, and that wasn't serving us. Cause then it would, it would honestly drag out into a much greater, you know, conflict for us. And so we've learned to just hold that space. And so, so um, something that he does now is he will just call me out or just hold that, like, I, I want you right now to really just tell me, is that really what you need and want or is it not? And then I have to check myself on the inside and say, no, like the, the promise we've made to each other is we're going to say what we need in the moment and not let it fester and grow because what you resist does persist and it's still going to be in there. And I think that's been a lot of the conflict that happened, especially once you have kids, has come because we we didn't say what we needed up front. Yeah. And I think just being real. So she said something out. Um, she said, calling each other out. I was on a podcast a little back, the Dad Edge podcast. Um, shout out to Larry. He's awesome. He does some awesome work for guys. But he had made a statement that him and his wife call each other forward. They they don't like that term, call each other out. And they call each other forward. And that really resonated with me um, because I think that's really what you want, right? Like you want to move forward with that person. You want to get to the places where you want to go um, and where you want to move to, not stay stagnant. Um, and I think you just have to be honest with each other about those things. Like, hey, does this bother you? A and just answer honestly. Yeah, it may it may hurt their feelings for a minute. Um, but as a partner in this relationship, like when we committed to our marriage, like um, it's it's for better or worse. It's not just for status quo. Like, so we are always going to try to do those things and and understand. Like, I think those um, those terms are important, and I and I think about those a lot. Like. When you say those vows, it's for better and worse. It doesn't say anything about just staying stagnant, right? Like everything you're doing in your marriage is moving it one way or the other. It's either you're making it better or making it worse. So for us to be honest and be real, um, even when it's not comfortable, I think is super, super important. And I think that, or go ahead. I was just going to say something that you say though, that I think that we've, we've had to realize is that like the ego also wants to drive like that conversation sometimes. Um, like, I don't like to be wrong. I don't know about anybody else out there. Uh, I'm pretty sure you don't like to be wrong sometimes too. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't think I am wrong. So I don't, go. I don't know what she's talking about. And so one of the things that we've had to also do is like ask ourselves a question or we, we often talk about it or, or we're able to, I love that call it forward idea, by the way, is um, to notice that like the ego all, all of a sudden starts to rear up in the conversation and it sounds like I want to be right. I am right. It's my way. And the more that drives the ship in the marriage, then I think the less honesty can exist because that it's kind of like masked. And so letting the ego be smaller than the, the potential you want to grow yeah. together as a couple is also something that I don't think a lot of people articulate loud or they don't even recognize that it's like the ego that's driving the whole conversation. Um, and I know for me, I speak to me, can't speak for you, but for me, the egos had to die a lot through our marriage in order to create like what we have together now. Yeah, no, same. Like it's, it's hard. Like guys, I know you can relate to this. Um, like admitting you're wrong is not an easy thing, especially like coming from, I think one, just being a guy and then just from like our, my line of work, yeah, right? Like sure. it's not an easy thing to do. It's not easy to just be like, yeah, like that's, I screwed up. I'm incorrect. Um, but then also, um, and this kind of leads into our second point about supporting each other, um, understanding like there's multiple ways uh, to do things, right? And I may have my preference on how dishes should be loaded in the dishwasher. Which is wrong. wrong. <laughs> and you may do it a completely <laughs> opposite way, which makes zero sense. Um, but no, just understanding those things, right? Like understanding like, hey, this is how um, I do things. And this is how my brain sees it and my mind hears it and how I interpret a solution um, is different than yours. So supporting each other and understanding that I think is mm -hmm. like, has helped us a ton. Yeah, I always think about when I coach clients, like something that comes up that's helped me in our marriage, but helps me w work with clients is that 
when Justin and I got married, we brought into our marriage like our own manuals of how we were going to operate in our world. Like unconsciously, we just don't, we don't recognize it, right? Based on how you witnessed your parents parenting you, how your mom and dad interacted and how your mom raised you and other relationships you've had, mine too, right? And you don't like, you get up and you exchange vows, but you don't exchange like the manuals for how you're gonna exist in a marriage. I don't read mine or his, he doesn't read mine. And so now you're operating kind of with different things, like s subtle things too, of like what you're gonna do during a holiday, how you're gonna open Christmas gifts. Like do your kids unwrap Santa gifts or just leave them unpacked? Like all these things that you never really knew Thank you. Um, we're going to happen um, in your marriage. And I think it's important that all relationships exist that way, too. And so we have to understand that he's operating in his way. I'm operating in my way. We have to open up the doors for communication if we're going to really build, like write our own manual mm -hmm. together in our life now. Yeah, and supporting each other in those things, right? Like um, give and take, you're, you're building a new manual together and you're gonna take bits and pieces from each one and figure out what works for you. But I know um, the supporting each other is, is sometimes hard, right? Because like we talked about earlier, like that ego can get in the way of things. It can, it can, it, it's hard to prioritize others over maybe your wants sometimes. And that always doesn't lead to supporting each other, right? Like I know, like we have this talk still now, nowadays, um, you have clients with clients or you're going to be on a podcast or you're going to do something else. And I need to come out here and I need to make knives and get some blades done and do those things. But the kids also need to go certain places. So like whose responsibility is that? And understanding and just talking about it and like working ourselves through it. And by no means, like, are we perfect on this all the time? Time. like there's still conflict right like it's it's never like every day is blissful and we yeah. just wear um what are the what are the tones now that are like all like just cream and brown monochrome and is monochrome that, is that right? i don't know yeah we just wear monochrome stuff <laughs> and hang out by the pool and eat charcuterie boards and drink prosecco like that's not every day right there's still days where i'm like gratefully it is some days though. some days <laughs> yes um but there's definitely days where there's like oh i thought you were taking the kids i have this and I am not a big calendar keeper. Um, she's way better at that and getting better, um, but that causes conflict. But supporting each other and understanding and then just communicating, hey, you have this, I have this. And even when there is conflict, like how do we support each other? We support each other by finding solutions and making it work, not by placing blame like and, and causing a fight because that gets us zero, um, zero closer to where we want to be. Yeah. I think that when it comes to support, like it's two elements. There's like the strategic, the tangible stuff, like how we operate in our day to make each other's things happen. But I think the first step or the most important step is like actually committing to understand that like your husband, your wife, they have visions and dreams. And there's kind of like this push pull, I think, that has happened inside of our marriage that like it happens in seasons, right? It's like recognizing when the other person is about to or has something big, has a huge milestone that they're in pursuit of and being willing to just like pause for a moment and put your your vision, not like totally away, but just understand that there is like this, this ebb and flow that happens between. I feel like that's also worked out really well for us to be able to communicate like, hey, this next six months is gonna be a time where I'm like going all in and doing this. And it's like, okay, recognizing that that's what Justin wants or needs and then having the same reciprocity exist too. Yeah. Um, because I think support isn't just like the calendaring. I think support is legitimately like- Supporting. It's like, okay, what do you need? What do you need to make this happen? How can I be in your back pocket? Does that mean like, I can't tell you how many times this guy's in the middle of calls or in the middle of something been like showed up in my office and dropped a protein shake and a cup of coffee and my greens or like brought in breakfast. That to me- It's like, money in the bank, guys. <laughs> do that. Do those things. That to me just screams like, I got you. I'm here for your dreams. And um, I don't think it's solely the wife's, like, I think that that is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and I think uh, uh, when we were talking about recording this podcast, I'm just going to share this story because it, it was something that we talked about. We were talking about what were we going to talk about? I said, I'm, I'm here for you, whatever you want to talk about. But I remember we were driving out of town somewhere and something had happened, something positive had happened. Um, and I like reached over and like rubbed his back and was just like, I'm so proud of you. You like make me so proud. I forget, you know, the words. And I remember a little tears welling up in his eyes and he looked at me and he was just like, I need that. I'm getting emotional talking about it right now. Um, like I need that. Like I really need that. And I think that 
You're good. You're good. <laughs> Um, sometimes as wives, like the man steps into that provider role so well, like I'm speaking for you, like he just gets done what we need. He protects us. Um, but like to see that moment of like emotional vulnerability, um, and this was as he was leaving the PD. So we were in this like weird place, right. Where you're like reestablishing your identity and figuring out what's, and he's out on a limb doing these things. And when he looked at me and I was just like, Oh, I was, I was shook. Honestly, I was like, he does need that. And I think we all need that. And I, I've worked on being better for that, not just making assumptions, but to just like let him know I'm proud and to let him know like bringing the coffee or, you know, whatever, having the whatever ready for him. And so I think sometimes we also overlook the small moments of just like that subtle eye to eye and really seeing each other. Yeah. Like you're a human being at the end of the day who's taking risks and putting yourself out there. And so that's also what support looks like. Yeah. And I think like, um, something I think about a lot is like loving you is different than being in love with you. Like I'm always going to love you. Like I, I love you, but I need to actively love you. Like it's a verb, right? Like do things for you and do support. Um, so I think sometimes like as guys, we, we naturally take on that or, or you should naturally take on that provider role. I mean, you do those things. Um, and sometimes we like to convince ourselves that we don't need like praise or recognition. Um, but I, I, gosh, I remember that. And it was just like, so nice to hear. And it's like, oh, like I need that. Like I need to hear those words of support from my wife. Um, like it means the world to you. And it gives you just like a little bit of confidence to keep pushing and to keep doing what you need to be doing. And it's the same, like we got to give those to you. Like I know the better part of our, the beginning of our marriage was like all about my career, right? It was about, shoot, our relationship. It was about like playing college football, moving, bouncing to and from all these colleges for a couple of years, trying to figure that out, losing my identity there, getting hired by the PD, figuring that out, getting onto the SWAT team. Like so much of that revolved around what I wanted to do. Um, so getting to a place where for one, like I could see that, I could understand it. Like, hey, like a lot of this has been about me and yeah, like I'm providing, I'm doing these things. Um, but also understanding like, hey, she's got things that she's wanted to do. She's got dreams, she's got wishes, she's got things that she wants to accomplish. So how can I truly support her um, and, and push my wants and needs down for a little bit as far as like goals and drive and stuff like that. So I think it's, it's extremely important to see those things. And, and yes, ladies, like, Tell your husband you're proud of him, like, like specifically about something he's doing. Like, it's a game changer for us guys. I promise you that. And men too. I agree. And I think that other catalyst for us to be able to step back and see this too is just what what do we want our kids to see as their manual moving forward in their relationships? Mm -hmm. And so for us, we want we have a, a boy and a girl, right? So we want both of our kids to know that like that mutual support in a relationship is normal, that mm -hmm. you enter into a relationship with another person and they're che cheerleading for your dreams, you're cheerleading for their dreams, and there is synergy around that. And the only way they know that is if we model it instead of it being one-sided or something like that yeah. along the way. Yeah, for sure. What, what you're doing in your relationship is showing your daughter what's acceptable from a husband and showing your husband what your is son. acceptable or your, yeah, your son what is acceptable from a wife. Like those are, that's where they're going to see it. They're not seeing it anywhere else, right? So be that model, um, be who you want those, that, that relationship to be like, you just got to be, be like that. Um, so the third point um, I wanted to talk about, and I think this is, um, important both ways, but I know this has been extremely important to me is like listening to each other and specifically listening versus fixing. Um, so you tell me what you think of when you hear that as it relates to me. Um, I mean, I'm a fixer, so I definitely know that like when somebody comes to me with the problem, I default and like I wear my coach hat so strong and i'm like oh let me let me get in there let's get the root cause like let's really figure this out and create a solution and that is just not always appropriate or needed um and it's created conflict for us because i like you can't always wear all the hats all the time in a relationship because your person needs you to show up differently in certain mm -hmm. contexts um and so for me equally the other way is if i go to him and i word vomit, all these things on my brain. He's kind of like, what do you want me to do with this? Like, what am I supposed to do with this? And so I, I think this is an extremely helpful component. Yeah. 
So I think just talking and we like, we have those clear conversations. Like, well, she'll come to me sometimes or I'll come to her and I'll say, Hey, like, I don't need you to fix a problem. I'm just going to vent and I want you to listen. Just listen to me. Like not try to tell me what I need to do different because I'm already, um, in your stuff, like in my junk, like my head is spinning, like things are going crazy and I don't know what I'm doing or how I'm screwing up or what my next move is. Um, so the last thing I want to do at that moment is just get critiqued by the person that's more important to me or the most important person in, in my life to me is like just to get critiqued from there. So I think this all kind of ties together, right? As far as supporting each other, uh, being honest and real and then listening versus fixing, like have that ability to have that clear communication and be like, hey, babe, like I don't I don't need you to fix me. I don't need to tell you that I need to um, have more dealers for my knives and I need to concentrate on selling versus making. Like, I just need you to listen to the problem right now and figure thing and, and just like be there with me and kind of like help let me vent and then we'll get to a fixing stage later. Yeah. Right. And I think that is extremely helpful in our marriage and same for her. Like when she's come to me, cause I'm the same way, like, um, and I definitely am guilty of, I'm getting better at it for sure, but used to be like my background, like on the police department, um, on the SWAT team for a really long time. Like if there's a problem, like you just fix it. Like, I don't even know why we're talking about this. Like, let's just fix it. Like what's, what's the point of the emotions? What's the point of this? Like, if this is an issue, like here's things we can do to fix the problem. Why are we wasting time? Like doing this? And she would tell me, she's like, she would get kind of like pissed sometimes. She'd be oh, like, I, would. I am not like one of your teammates at work. Like I'm your wife. And I'm like, ah, fair point. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Um, but I think just getting to that place where you where you can be honest and do those things and well, understand. I agree. I think the question though, is like now we have this open question that I would encourage you to like see how it fits for you is just as he's brain dumping, if he doesn't thought like, you know, sometimes things are emotional. So you just come in and you start talking to the other person. So it's like, before I reply, I will just say, okay, do you want me to help you fix this? Or am I just listening right now? Like, tell me what my role is so that I can just be active listening and not feel like in my brain, I'm already trying to be like, how can I help him? How can I help him? Because anytime I see somebody struggling, it's like, I want that. And so, and we do the same for the kids. You know, our daughter will, you know, going through like, very, I would say, standard kind of teenage girl stuff th through the last few years. And so she has a lot to talk about and a lot to say, and she doesn't want to hear us fix it. Mm -hmm. um, but we had to clarify that too. So, hey, do you, do you want me to just listen right now for you? Yeah, mom, that's all I need is I just want you to listen. And that helps me be a way better parent for her so that I can clarify what role she needs from me. And then she'll say later, okay, but that thing that we talked about, like, could we talk about how to fix it or how do we, you know, fix that problem? And so it's, it's extremely valuable. Yeah. And building off of that, like truly listening, right? This is something um, we've talked about and, um, it go, it kind of, it kind of ties into this because there is times early on in our marriage, like I would be telling her something and I could see her brain, like at the point she kind of stopped listening because she had an answer or a response. Right. And I've done the same thing to her. Um, so you truly, can tell when the eyes start to go track, yeah. you're calling information and you're looking for it. And it's like, Oh, I've lost him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I'm just waiting to either rebut whatever she's saying or, come up with that solution. Like I'm not even listening anymore at that point. I'm just, I'm just waiting to speak. Right. And I think there's a big difference for that. And I think you guys probably can all see it or all relate. Like at some point your spouse, um, or you have done that to your spouse where you're having a conversation, um, and you have the answer because your ego is getting in the way, because I know, I know I either am not wrong or I have a better way to fix this. And I just need to tell you those things right away versus like truly listening and understanding what's happening. So I think like listening with intention um, and just really, really listening. Sometimes we, I think, mistake hearing for listening. Um, like I can hear noises all over. That doesn't mean I know where they're coming from or what they mean versus like, hey, she's coming to me, which I want her to always do, which I want my kids to always do. I want them to come to me. So I have got to be able to actually listen and digest what they're saying and understand like, okay, I'm listening. So I think really, truly doing that, like listening with intention is super important. And again, like not perfect at it. Again, probably not one of my best um, traits at some times. Well, and I think sometimes we think we're listening and we're distracted, like with a million other things. We're on a computer, we're on a phone, yeah. we're trying to listen to a podcast or the TV's on in the background or like a kid's talking too is 
for me, I know that I really like, I want to, like, I need to know he's listening because his eyes are on me and he's not distracted by outside things. So I will often say, uh, are you actually listening or like put down the phone or like, I can tell you're distracted when you're ready, like to listen all the way, tell me. Um, so that, cause I'm notorious for just like wanting to hit him up with things and he's not prepared. And yeah, it, it, it's been, it, it's such an improvement for like, yeah. the way we communicate around that. hundred percent. Um, and then just truly doing it, like understanding if like, if your priorities are your spouse or marriage, um, then like make it the priority. That doesn't mean like every time, like, and it, and it works both ways, right? Like if I want you to listen, I can't come to you during a super important time, like two minutes before you're getting on like a, a coaching call with a hundred women. Like I can't come do that to you and mess up your whole flow. So I need to know that as well. But that means when I can, like, hey, I'm gonna stop what I'm doing. I'm going to listen. Um, but then, like she said, just communicating it too. Like, hey, I've got to get this done. Give me two minutes. Hey, is this is this super, super important? Like, are you struggling with something? Yes. Okay, I'll stop everything I'm doing. Hey, no, no, no. It's nothing big. Like, it's about the kid's schedule or it's about something else, but it's nothing like time sensitive. Okay, cool. Give me like two minutes. I'm right in the middle of this. Um, and I will finish it and then I'll come back to you. Like we have that conversation a lot because you're rolling at work or I'm rolling in work or I'm doing something. And we now just have those conversations. At first, like that was not an easy thing to do um, because again, your ego gets in the way. For me, it did anyways. Like, um, like, hey, do you think what I'm doing is not important? Like, do you just want to keep interrupting me? Um, but then you got to just dive into your priorities and understand like truly, truly what they are and then not get hurt if those questions are asked, like questions are asked to gather information and to make good choices. So if I'm asking you a question, um, then I want the real answer. And that goes back to the fir first point, like being honest and real. Like mm -hmm. if you come to me with something and I ask you, Hey, is this something you need right now? And you tell me, no, like, Hey, that can't come back up two hours from now. And that can't be used against me or I can't use that against her if the roles are reversed saying, well, you said it wasn't really important. Well, no, it was really important. I just didn't want to tell you that because you should know I'm the priority. Yeah. Well, hey, like we're in this together. We're trying to support each other and move in the right direction all at the same time. So like understanding how all these things intertwine to make you stronger and get you to where you want to be. Yeah. And as you're speaking, I feel like there's two tangible things that we do well that keep this cadence like increase communication, um, help us know that we're supporting each other. One is I think we do a really good job of like top of the day check-in or mm -hmm. night before. It's like, okay, let's go over what you have going on tomorrow or let's go on what's happening today. Like we, we operate in our own calendars, right? And we can't expect the other person to mind read the necessities of what are happening. Like if he's going to be out running errands and he doesn't communicate to me and we're at pickup, but I'm on a call uh, or we have school pickup or something and I'm on a call, then, you know, there's, there's unnecessary conflict there. So I think tangibly just that quick, like little couple minute check-in what's going on today, what's your expectation and you know, expectations, what do you need has been really, yeah. really beneficial. And the second thing that you said the word, and I, I brought to mind is that question that I feel like has shifted so much for us around what's your intention? You said that word, be intentional. And so we started really asking each other this question when sometimes there's conflict that exists or something's like stirring up. I'm getting uncomfortable right now. Yeah, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that because he is who he is, he he is a pot stir a little bit like that is his nature. And I also know that of you. Um, sometimes stuff would start to come up and I'd be like, like, what's the point here? Like, this doesn't feel like this is well intended. And so, um, and equally sometimes like I want to prove him that he's proved to him that he's wrong or that I was right. And so we started kind of a willingness to call that question out, like, okay, pause, what's your intention right now? Yeah. And I would, see in his eyes like my intention is to yeah prove you wrong prove me wrong and i would equally do that and then what what would happen is he would just stop mm -hmm. and i would or i would just stop and it would be like this doesn't serve us collab like collaboratively like there's no point here other than ego there's really no solution that needs created and for me the the flow or and not again conflict arises but to be able to let something end quickly instead of it escalating i think that question has been really yeah, powerful. Hundred percent. Yeah, what the intentions are and like how to deal with it and get through them. And I think it's 
I think it's extremely important. And, um, and then just admitting when you're wrong, like there was times when this, when we initially started doing this, like I would get pissed off. She'd be like, what's your intention with that? And I'd be like, nothing. Like, what do you mean? What's my intention? Like, I'm just having a conversation. And she'd be like, no, like, what's your real intention? I'm like, ah, to prove you wrong and to like, <laughs> and to you're annoying me right now. So we're, I'm just going to pick a fight and I'm going to win because I'm good at arguing. Like that would honestly like just be your thought and you're so stubborn and you get caught up in it. Um, but then at the end of the day, like if you do that repeatedly, if I do that over and over and over and over, um, we talked about this kind of, um, in the past about like reverse engineering our lives and where we want to be. Like we're going to live to 120. We're going to have grandkids. We're going to have great grandkids. Like it's going to be great. So if I want to get there, and I'm giving my wife, like if I have bad intentions, like trying to cause problems, like that doesn't get us there. So really being able to be real with each other and talk honestly and just, and just work through things and understanding that we're here to support each other. We're here to strengthen our marriage for us to become the best versions of ourselves and truly hold each other accountable that, to that also. Like it's a, it's just one of the things that we've always done and, um, or I've not always done, I would yeah. say to some extent, right? But we've known each other since we were 12 or 13 years old. So 30 years almost, like that's a long time. There's a lot of growing that has had to take place to make sure that we're still on the same page and we're moving in the right direction. It's not just like fate happened. Like God obviously plays a huge role in that now. Um, and he's played a whole huge role in it. But I was gonna say, I think that's why a lot of marriages that start like ours don't last is because of what you just said, the opposite of what it's like the couple isn't willing to grow together through it and give yeah. like the space for you to be your own person over here and me to be my own person, but to still keep, you know, having touch points during. And so I think that's why we are, you know, a small part of the statistic left. And that's because we've had a willingness to like, have these hard conversations and understand that this is not easy all the time for sure. No, it's not. And then I also understand like it's never an option to not be married to each other like it's just not like that's not something we talk about it's not something we joke around about it's it's truly like something like um we don't joke about getting divorced we don't joke about splitting up we don't joke about those things because that's just like not an option that's it's who we are we are in this we committed like we are going to grow we're going to push we're going to see where we can go and we're going to enjoy the hell out of it and and be awesome together with it Word. So, thank you for Thanks coming for on me. You both have very like independent lives. Like you have your friends, you do your coaching thing, you have your friends. You do. Can you speak to that? Because I know a lot of people, even if you were watching this, would think that you just are always together, always yeah, yeah. doing all the things. And very few people actually have those separate things to, and then coming back together. So it's like, if you could, speak how does that work? That, I think it'd be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. Rare. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my buddy Mike that's from Troubled Seas that does all our, our stuff for us, I'm um, just asked like how we have our independent lives and but how we come together and how we kind of work on both. Like I travel a bunch, she travels a bunch, she goes and does speaking gigs and coaching gigs and consulting things places. I go do my contracting stuff. I have knife shows. I do these things. We have friends outside of just couple friends, right? Yeah. Like girlfriends, guy friends, couple yeah. friends. So we operate um, independently very well. And I think you have to, like, I think you have to be, you have to be happy and content as a person, as an individual, um, before you can start working on this, right? Like if I am miserable all the time, if I don't like who I am as a man, if I'm not happy, um, like me trying to come to you to look for happiness is not going to work always. And we've had those seasons mm -hmm, for, for sure. sure. Like we've been in those seasons. Like I, I feel like I had that season probably a year and a half ago where I was really struggling with some things and I was way, he was probably exhausted of me, honestly. Not at um, all. <laughs> and I could recognize it, but I couldn't, you know, it was just, it was a season. Um, but what he didn't do was like give up his stuff. He was like, hey, like we got to figure out what your solution is. But I think of times like freshman year at college and some of those other space, like where that codependency existed. And I think what we never did was give up the outside things that we had in order to like, we, we maybe were involved in them a little bit less in that moment of need, but I don't think, you know, there's, yeah, there's that too. And, and I think another thing that leads to the independence piece is like, I'm notorious for, especially I think back to when Justin first got on the SWAT team. And at that point, 
I we had had our first kiddo. I was like, we were a couple years in. I was staying home from. I had left my teaching career. Miller was about. Miller to was um was was right after Miller was born, and so now I went from being a high school teacher, having you know been to undergrad, grad school, going into a profession I thought I was going to stay forever in, and here in my brain, this guy's out having coffee and hanging out with his friends at work. I was one pissed off woman during that season of my life. I will say there was a lot of resentment because I was this constant scorekeeping, and mm -hmm. I think. What I had to realize is that scorekeeping, like I was in a bubble. I was scorekeeping all the things that I was doing at home, but not necessarily seeing the external things. And I think this is where that lack of um, independence often comes from, or there's like a resentment build about independence. It's not build it together. It's like, well, you went out and did that. So I'm, I should be able to, yeah. you went on the guy's trip. I'm going to get on the guy's trip. And so what that does for me is it pulls you apart instead of having that verbal articulation of like, hey, I'm really thinking about doing this. What do you think? Does this work out for our family? Um, but I think I've always personally been just independent mm -hmm. um, and being able to not give that up. Because I think sometimes we both were very independent, especially you had to be like coming from losing your dad and being solo with your mom for a while. I think that a lot of people will give up that independence when they come into a marriage thinking it's necessity instead of like holding space to be their own person and pursue their own interests separately. And then also having that stuff that you guys like to do together. Yeah. Your marriage will be the strongest when you as individuals are the strongest. And then you have God at the top. Like I truly, truly believe that. And that's something we've come to learn, but I think you have to be independent and you have to be strong in the person you are. Like I am still Justin Walker. She's still Amanda Martin. Like that's how I look at her sometimes. Like that's who she is. She's like the strong, hot girl in uh, seventh grade, everyone, they, now she's all mine. Me blush. Um, but like, that's who she is. And that's who I want her to be. Because to, to tell you the truth, a hundred percent, like if she became a really passive um, woman, like it, it, that's just not who I wanted her to be. That's not who she was designed to be. And she would have to be like shrinking herself to fit my idea of what she should be. And that shouldn't be the case. So being able to do those things, being able to travel and have all these other things going on and, and run your own business and and living our lives together, but also have our, things that are completely separate. Um, it takes work, it takes good communication and it takes that support. Like, hey, there's times when I'm gone for a week or 10 days that she's not loving it, right? Because kids sports are in effect. They're going, there's times a couple years ago, she was gone for like- Three weeks. Three weeks during the summer. And I was losing my mind. Um, but it wasn't actually that bad and like how excited she was and the amount of growth she had and what she was able to accomplish and like her vision when she came home, like that's what's worth it. So it's, it's keeping score as a couple, like we have a score together. We don't have a score that's contrary to each other, right? Like her wins doesn't take away points from me and mine don't take away from hers. So getting to understand that, like that gives us points together, those independent lives coming together um make us stronger in the end and it teaches us how to work through problems and solve problems so i think that's that's a very very important thing so appreciate that um love it we will end like uh we always do i'm gonna have her read this this time because this is like her favorite verse so um so uh, much so I that i have it tattooed on my body she does <laughs> so it's romans um 12 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So with that, thank you guys as always for listening. Um, appreciate it. Um, if you don't, if your wives um, want to follow someone awesome, check out my wife. Hey, um, at, you can give all your stuff. Instagram at a walk my way. Um, and we do have a podcast too called the best damn coach. If you're in the coaching world. Um, and if you just have questions, you want to chit chat, you're a wife in the LEO or military space or struggling. I mean, those are my people too, that, um, we've learned a few things being in that space and, um, mentored a lot of women, a lot of wives through that too. So always here just to help and have questions. Um, feel free to reach out. Okay. Thank you guys.